In this study, we are going to look at the subject of groves and high places. We are going to see how people worship their false idols in the Old Testament and show how people are still doing the same thing today. High places in the Bible can picture a pet sin for a New Testament Christian. You'll notice if you have ever read your Bible that people have a hard time. They had a hard time of keeping the high places out of their life. Just like you may be having a hard time dropping a besetting sin, they had a hard time dropping the high places. First, we are going to look at groves in the Bible. In Genesis 21:33, you have the first mention of the word grove. Genesis 21:33 says, And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba, and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. So Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba, and called on the name of the Lord. This goes to show you that a lot of times good things can turn into bad things. That's why a lot of people say everything that is bad is a good thing twisted. If the devil sees you doing something good, he wants to get in there and corrupt what you're doing. And groves got to be so bad that God gave this command in Deuteronomy 16.21, Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. And that gives a definition, too, of a grove. And it has it's a grove, it's trees. And some commentators and others will say that a grove is just an image. It isn't just an image. It is a place where people would go to worship the idols or the image. They would plant the grove and build an altar and then worship the image in the midst of the trees. And you can see in 1 Kings fifteen thirteen that there is a difference between an idol and a grove and that people worship the idol in the grove in first kings fifteen thirteen, it says and also maka his mother even her he removed from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove and asa destroyed her idol and burned it by the brook kedron the only time a grove is called a graven image in the bible is when someone makes a graven image from the wood out of the grove. Second Kings twenty one seven says, And he set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house. So he made a graven image from the wood that he got out of the grove. But there is a distinction between a grove and a graven image. They would plant these groves, build an altar, and worship the idols and images in the midst of the trees. It is weird to think about why people would be tempted to worship statues and things made out of wood, but there was probably other things connected with the worship, like fornication and other perverted things that attracted their flesh to going to the groves and high places. And then God even speaks of cutting down and destroying groves in the Bible. He tells Gideon to throw down an altar of Baal, and cut down the grove that was by it. He then tells him to use the wood to offer a burnt sacrifice. You can find this in Judges 6, 24-25. So he used the wood from the wicked grove to offer something to God. This showing that God can take something that is bad and turn it around into something good. And then in Judges 6:30. It says, Then the men of the city said unto Joash, Bring out thy son, that he may die, because he hath cast down the altar of Baal, and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it. The men of the city wanted to kill Gideon, because he cut down the altar of Baal and the grove. And people hate for you to kick their gods, and that is why you can't say anything now without somebody getting offended. And that's because they are their own god. They, you, they want you to be politically correct and not hurt anyone's feelings. They want to be able to put up a statue of Satan without anyone saying anything about it. 
just like they did in Detroit. But yet it's okay for the same kind of people to demolish the Ten Commandments that, like they did in Oklahoma. And we can see in the Bible that groves are said to provoke the Lord to anger. In 1 Kings 16.33 it says, And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord to anger, or to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger, than all the kings of Israel that were before him. The groves made God so angry that he took Israel out of the land he gave to their fathers because they had made themselves groves and worshipped false gods in the groves. 1 Kings 14.15 For the Lord shall smite Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall root up Israel out of this good land which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river because they have made their groves provoking the Lord to anger. Second Kings 17.16 and they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. Often people like to do bad things in the dark. They don't like to do it in the light. So they will look for a dark or shady place to do their wicked deeds. And what better place than a grove to worship your false gods and idols in. But you can't hide anything from God. He is omnipresent and sees everything all of the time. Adam tried to hide himself as well, and it's no coincidence he was trying to hide from God amongst the trees. In Genesis 3.8, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Have you ever noticed that when you come across a store that sells a lot of sinful stuff, that it will many times be really dark inside? Stores like Spencer's and Hot Topic and many restaurants that sell alcohol and have a bar with loud, wicked music will be dark or dim inside. People usually don't like to do their dirty deeds in the light. And people loved the groves because of the shadow. Hosea 4.13 says, They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom and your spouses shall commit adultery. You can see how God expresses his dislike for the groves. In Exodus 34.13 and Deuteronomy 7.5, God commands the cutting down of groves, and Hezekiah is said to have been right in the sight of the Lord when he removed the high places and broke the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it. Getting rid of the groves went right along with getting rid of the worship of strange gods. In Second Chronicles 14, 2 through 3, it says, And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God, for he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places, and break down the images and cut down the groves. These people would plant these groves and build an altar, and worship their false gods in the midst of these groves. And this provoked the Lord to anger and jealousy. And the Bible said the Lord was with Jehoshaphat, and that Jehoshaphat did seek, or didn't seek, after Balaam. He also walked in God's commandments. His heart was said to be lifted up in the ways of the Lord, and he had the groves cut down. Look at Second Chronicles 17.3. It says, And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and sought not unto Balaam, but sought to the Lord God of his father and walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand and all Judah 
brought to Jehoshaphat presents, and he had riches and honor and abundance, and his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he took away the high places and groves out of Judah. And then Second Chronicles 19.3 says, Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, and that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land, and hast prepared thine heart to seek God. So God hated the groves, and the men who were right with God had the groves cut down. It was said to be a good thing found in Jehoshaphat for taking away the groves. And there are still groves today where people worship images and do wicked, perverted things. Just like Manasseh was doing in Second Chronicles 33, he made groves and worshipped the host of heaven and caused his children to pass through the fire, meaning he sacrificed his children to the devil. This still goes on today, and even big shot rich guys will worship 40 foot owls at Bohemian Grove and do a mock human sacrifice. This is no surprise since owls can represent unclean spirits in the Bible. But the Lord Jesus Christ will destroy all groves at the second advent. In Micah 5.10-15 through 15 it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down all thy strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images also will I cut off, and thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands, and I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee. So will I destroy thy cities, and I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. All of these Mother Earth tree-hugging people are always talking about saving the trees, and they worship Mother Nature, but nature worship is nothing new, and God could care less about trees. There is always going to be trees, because the Bible talks about there being trees during the tribulation. And God is burning them during the tribulation. In Revelation 8, 7 it says, The first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And that is what God thinks about Mother Nature. He doesn't care about trees or the earth itself because he is just going to make a new one later on. This tree worship stuff is nothing new. Even in the Old Testament, people loved green trees and they were associated with child sacrifice. In Isaiah 57, 5, Inflaming yourselves with idols under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. In Jeremiah 2, 20, God says they played the harlot under every green tree. That is because they were spiritual adulterers. And Jeremiah 30, or Jeremiah 3, 6 says, The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. Notice the Lord said to Jeremiah, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? He probably said, Yes, Lord, it's all over the internet, or whatever their form of Facebook was then, because there's nothing new under the sun. In 2016, you can't help but see what people are doing with their false gods and playing the harlot with their false gods because they put it all over Facebook and social media. So I'm sure that they were broadcasting their sin just like people are broadcasting their sin today something else interesting is when jacob cleaned up his household and got rid of the strange gods he hid them under an oak once again associating idols with trees and if i'm not mistaken this is the first mention of the word oak in genesis 35 2 through 4 it says then jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments 
and let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob and all the strange gods which were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. The Antichrist is the idle shepherd and a wicked guy named Absalom, who was also a type of the Antichrist, was found hanging in an oak. In Second Samuel 8.10 And when the man of God disobeyed the Lord's commands in First Kings 13, he did it after sitting under an oak. And that's where they kept the false gods. So no, so no doubt groves and trees are connected to idol worship in the Bible. And even other things like sacrificing children to idols. And Hollywood is coming out with a movie called A Monster Calls. About a boy who befriends a walking, talking tree. And when Jesus was healing the blind man, he said, I see men as trees walking. So this shows there is no new thing under the sun. Everything in Hollywood, they copy the Bible. The writers are led by a spirit that knows the Bible. And that spirit can't do anything but counterfeit God's word. And in the Bible, people love to go to the high places to worship their gods. The first high place was on Mount Ararat where Noah built an altar and offered burnt offerings to the Lord. Remember, this was before the law. In Genesis 8.20, it has the first mention of the word altar. And you can tell a lot about something by the first mention of it in the Bible. In Genesis 8.20, it says, And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. This later on turned into something that God didn't like. If somebody is doing something good for the Lord, then the devil seems to always try to get in and mess it up. And the Bible lets us know that we aren't wrestling flesh and blood. In Ephesians 6.12 it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And Satan wants to be like the Most High. Those people who were building the Tower of Babel wanted the tower to reach unto heaven because they wanted to make a name for theirself. And Satan wanted to be God. He wanted to get the attention and be the one who got worship. According to the Bible, a man that wants to be lifted up high should keep a humble spirit. Proverbs 21.4 says, An high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. If you want to be exalted, you have to make yourself low. Matthew 23.12 says, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. The only one who who can rightfully have a high look is God himself. Isaiah 57.15 says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, I will dwell in the high and holy place with him also, that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. And in the Bible, going to the high places at times is connected with devil possession. The maniac of Gadara was said to always be in the mountains. In Mark 5.5 5 it says, And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. He didn't love the mountains because of the scenery. He was in the mountains worshipping other gods. The verse doesn't say that, but it implies that since high places is where people went to worship, and the prophets of Baal were doing the same thing as the maniac of Gadara. They were crying and cutting themselves. In 1 Kings 18.28 it says, And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. The high places seemed to be something that God didn't like. Even when people who were considered right with God and sacrificed 
in high places, it seems to imply that God didn't like it, even if they were sacrificing to him. In 1 Kings 3, 2, it says, Only the people sacrificed in high places, because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. Maybe you still have a besetting sin in your life. You seem as if you're right with God, and you may be. And you may be doing everything right except one thing. A lot of times Christians will look down on people who have a problem with drinking or cussing, or someone who is shacking up with someone, or someone who is addicted to pornography, or maybe has a problem with stealing, but they are forgetting that their mouth is sinful. They are doing everything right and may not be doing all these other bad things these other people are doing, but yet they sit and gossip all day, and they will look at the Christian who has a problem with drinking and say, well, he can't be saved since he's doing that, but yet they are gossiping and running their mouth all day about somebody else. They will look at a Christian who has got themselves in a horrible situation, shacking up with someone, and say, well, they can't be saved. But yet the same person who is saying this may have the sin of pride and jealousy in their life. Or some Christians will look down on Christians that have sins in their life like drinking or smoking. And they will look down on that person. But yet they don't care to sit and watch other people do the same sins on a HD TV. Or they will go to the movies where it is dark and watch movies like Fifty Shades of Grey or The Conjuring. And then bring a bunch of devils home with them after watching these movies. But a lot of Christians still have a besetting sin in their life. Even if it is just gossiping or being prideful and jealous. And people still love the high places. And there is no new thing under the sun. 1 Kings 15.14 says, But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. And so many times in the Bible, they just couldn't get rid of the high places. 1 Kings twenty two forty three says, And he walked in all the ways of Asa, his father. He turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, for the people offered and burnt incense yet in the high places. 2 Kings 12, 2 through 3 says, And Johash did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. All the days were in Johida the priests instructed him, but the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burned incense in the high places, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. Save that the high places were not removed, the people sacrificed and burned incense still on the high places. So maybe you are right with God, but still have something in your life that forces God to say, He is doing that which is right in the sight of the Lord, but yet He still celebrates Halloween and goes trick-or-treating, or He is still going to the movie theater, or He's still watching HBO, Showtime, and Cinemax. Or he is doing really good, but he is still using the modern perversions of the Bible. Or he is doing great in my sight, but nevertheless he is still going up to the contemporary Christian concerts. Or he is a King James Bible believer, but nevertheless he is still going to J-Fest. You should get rid of the high places in your life. And these people in the Old Testament even ordained priests for the high places. And they are called idolatrous priests in Second Kings twenty three five, and in Second Chronicles eleven fifteen it says, and he ordained him priests for the high places, and for the devils, and for the calves which he had made. These Belite priests and bell worshippers wore vestments, which is like a robe for a ceremony, just like the Catholics do. In 2 Kings 10.22 it says, And he said unto him that was over the vestry, Bring forth vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. Notice it said in 2 Chronicles 11.15, 
for the devils. It says he ordained him priest for the high places and for the devils. This goes to show that any time you are doing your besetting sin, there are devils present. When you when you are committing fornication, then there are devils present in the room with you. When you are watching watching pornography, you are under the influence of devils. And why do you think they call it alcohol? Why do you think they call alcohol liquid devil or wine and spirits? Maybe you are listening to rock music and that is your besetting sin. It is a sin to listen to wicked music and you need to confess it and trade the bad music in for good music. Maybe your besetting sin is watching soap operas and dancing with the stars and shows like that. It's a sin to watch those things and you need to get rid of your high places out of your life. The foolish woman is said to stay in the high places of the city. In Proverbs 9, 13 through 18, it says, A foolish woman is clamorous, she is simple, and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither, and as for him that wanteth of their understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant, but he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. This sounds like a house you wouldn't want to go trick-or-treating at. This would be the house on Haunted Hill, or the Tower of Terror, or the Haunted Mansion. And ever notice these dumb horror movies always have a house sitting up on a high place? Like in the Edward Scissors Hands movie, the character lives in a dark castle at the top of a big mountain and there is no new thing under the sun the bible talks about a foolish woman and a whore this pictures the great whore in the book of revelation and jezebel also pictures the great whore herself she worshiped false gods and caused people to commit spiritual fornication in revelation 2:20 says Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. The Bible also says that children were also sacrificed in the high places. Jeremiah thirty two thirty five says, And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not. Neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. People are doing the same thing today through abortions where they make money sacrificing children for their God, which is money. And you may not be going to any high places or groves to worship any graven images or false gods, but you probably have something wicked in your life that you need to get rid of. Paul says to turn to God from idols. In 1 Thessalonians 1, nine it says, For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had into you, and how ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. If you want to get back in fellowship with God, then just pray to Him and tell Him you're sorry for your pet sin and your idols. You can have victory over besetting sins, you just need to pray and read your Bible and stay away from things that might draw you back into that sin. 1 John 1, nine says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God in the flesh, died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed His blood for you and did it for you personally. No false god or idol could ever do this and never will do this. False gods don't sacrifice their self for their people. They want you to sacrifice to them. If you're a Christian, then your God sacrificed himself for you.